Amid the flickering shadows of a dimly lit room, a lone figure stands. Her name, Maya Kowalski. She is a name that has echoed through the halls of justice and hospitals alike. A young girl diagnosed with complex regional pain syndrome, her story takes a twist when her mother's desperate plea for a controversial treatment raises eyebrows. Was it a mother's love or a sinister case of Munchausen syndrome by proxy? A roller coaster of events unfolds, leading to a diagnosis of factitious disorder, a mother's tragic end, and a child left alone in the world. But wait, the story doesn't end here. A courtroom drama ensues, and a staggering figure of over $210 million is awarded to Maya's family. In a world where truth is often stranger than fiction, Maya's story stands out. Born into an ordinary life, Maya Kowalski was anything but ordinary. Maya's tale begins like many others, in the humble and comforting confines of home, where she was raised by her loving mother. As a child, Maya was bright, vibrant, and full of life. She was the kind of child who could light up a room and keep her mother's spirits high, even during the toughest of times. However, beneath the surface of her radiant smile and vivacious spirit, Maya carried a heavy burden. At a tender age, she was diagnosed with Complex Regional Pain Syndrome, or CRPS, a condition that made even the simplest of movements an excruciating ordeal. The pain was relentless, like a cruel joke played by her own body, and it began to take a toll on her. To ease her suffering, Maya's mother sought out the best medical help they could afford. They turned to an unusual treatment, ketamine infusions, a controversial method known for its powerful and rapid pain relief. The infusions brought Maya respite from her pain, but they also brought a storm of controversy and suspicion. Concerns were raised about the frequency of these treatments, the potency of the drug, and the mother's insistent demand for it. The whispers grew louder, and suspicion turned into accusation. Was it really Maya who needed the ketamine? Or was her mother using her to feed an addiction? While the world outside was quick to judge, Maya continued to battle her pain one day at a time, unaware of the controversy that was brewing around her. She was just a child after all, caught in the crossfire of societal judgment and her own debilitating condition. But Maya's medical journey was just beginning and it was about to take a dark turn. The lines between treatment and torment blurred as suspicion fell on Maya's biggest advocate, her mother. As Maya's health declined, a new controversy began to take shape. Doctors began to question the incessant demand for ketamine infusions by her mother. The constant push for a drug that was not a conventional treatment for complex regional pain syndrome raised eyebrows. Whispers about a possible case of Munchausen syndrome by proxy started circulating. This syndrome, a mental illness, involves a caregiver making up or causing an illness or injury in a person under their care, often to gain attention or sympathy. As the whispers grew louder, an unfortunate sequence of events unfolded. Maya was diagnosed with factitious disorder, a similar condition to Munchausen's, but where the individual feigns their own illness. Her world turned upside down as she was placed in the custody of the hospital. The once loving mother-daughter relationship was now under scrutiny painted with the brush of doubt and suspicion. But the story took an even darker turn. Maya's mother, unable to bear the accusations and the separation from her daughter, ended her life. The tragedy left a profound impact on everyone involved, but none more so than Maya. She was left alone, a young girl grappling with an agonizing condition and the loss of her mother, while trapped in a system that seemed to doubt her every word. In the wake of tragedy, Maya was left alone, trapped in a system that doubted her every word. As Maya fought for her truth, a beacon of hope emerged from an unexpected corner. In the midst of this complex, heart-wrenching situation, a professor stepped into the picture. This wasn't your average academic, but rather a specialist in complex regional pain syndrome, the very condition that Maya had been diagnosed with early on. He had heard of Maya's story and felt compelled to intervene, he meticulously examined Maya's medical history, combined with a thorough physical examination. His findings were conclusive. Maya indeed suffered from CRPS, validating her initial diagnosis. This wasn't a case of factitious disorder or Munchausen syndrome by proxy. It was a genuine medical condition causing Maya intense pain. This revelation sent shockwaves through the hospital. The narrative they had built around Maya and her late mother was turned on its head. The child they had deemed a victim of medical child abuse was, in reality, 
a victim of a misunderstood and underdiagnosed condition. But the professor's intervention didn't stop there. He went on to advocate for Maya's release from the hospital. He argued that keeping her in custody was not only unjust, but also detrimental to her health and well-being. There were legal hurdles to jump, bureaucratic red tape to cut through. But with the professor's unwavering support, the truth prevailed. Maya was finally released from the hospital, the same place that had become her prison for so long. Her release marked a significant turning point in the case. It was an affirmation of her truth, a validation of her pain, and a testament to the power of advocacy. In a shocking twist of fate, the tables had turned. Maya was no longer a suspect, but a survivor. Her story serves as a stark reminder that truth can often be stranger than fiction, and justice, although delayed, is never denied. Maya's story didn't end with her release. It was just the beginning. As the dust settled, the spotlight turned to the hospital that had held her captive in a web of misdiagnoses and mistrust. Maya's family pursued justice, launching a lawsuit against the hospital. The court case was a whirlwind of accusations and defenses, a tug of war between the hospital's insistence on their course of action and the Kowalski family's unwavering belief in Maya's condition. The jury deliberated, dissected the evidence, weighed the testimonies, and then the gavel fell. The jury sided with the Kowalskis, awarding them an eye-watering sum of over $210 million. A victory, yes, but a bittersweet one at best. For no amount of money could truly compensate for the pain and suffering Maya had endured. Yet the ripples of Maya's case extended far beyond the courtroom. Her story sparked a public outcry, a wave of indignation that swept across the nation. People questioned the medical practices, the readiness to dismiss the patient's voice, the rush to label and categorize without thorough investigation. Maya's ordeal became a stark reminder of the flaws within the healthcare system, prompting calls for change and reform. More significantly, Maya's case shone a light on complex regional pain syndrome, a condition often misunderstood and misdiagnosed. It underscored the need for more research, better understanding, and greater empathy towards those battling such debilitating conditions. In the aftermath, Maya emerged not just as a survivor, but a catalyst for change. Her story served as a powerful testament to the human spirit's resilience, a beacon of hope for others navigating similar struggles. Maya's fight had changed her life and the lives of many others. From the depths of despair, she had risen, forever altering the landscape of medical practice and patient advocacy. Through her story, we are reminded that sometimes the most profound changes stem from the most harrowing experiences. Maya Kowalski's story is a testament to the power of truth. Her journey, marked by pain, resilience, and ultimately, vindication, leaves us with several lessons. It reminds us that in the quest for truth, courage and persistence are invaluable. It also teaches us about the importance of empathy, of not rushing to judgment and the need to question narratives that seem too convenient or too neatly packaged. But Maya's story also leaves us with some enduring mysteries. What really happened in the hospital? How did Maya's mother, despite her desperate actions, love and care for her daughter? And how did a young girl, caught in a web of accusations and disbelief, find the strength to stand up for her truth? These questions do not have easy answers. They invite us to reflect, to question, and to engage in a deeper conversation about the complexities of human behavior and our medical and legal systems. We invite you, our viewers, to share your thoughts, theories, or additional information on Maya's story. Join us in unraveling the truth behind the headlines.